in chapter four, I talk about how the fact that these seed oils have changed our metabolism and they're not giving our cells energy. I talk about how that causes something called hypoglycemia symptoms, right? We get like this falling, like we feel like our blood sugar is falling. We get brain fog, we get irritability, and we get this abnormal form of hunger called hangry. That's why I call it starving brains. Our hangry is your brain is having an energy emergency. And that's really important to understand because so many people now experience hangry and they think the solution is, well, I just need a snack. No, the, the needing a snack is, is a symptom of the problem. And if you continue to snack, you are not going to resolve that root problem of oxidative stress. And you are very likely to just gradually gain weight. Like most mm. people who slowly their weight creeps up over their lives, often they are snackers and they have a little snack here, a little snack there. They carry some food around so they can function while they're on the, on the, on the go or at, at work. Um, and sometimes it doesn't creep up, but the, the problem is that our brains are starving for energy. We can't use our body fat. So we keep eating. We can build fat that we can't burn. And the solution is we have to be able to start burning our body fat. And so I, I, I walk you through the solution to that, which, in, which is not to start by losing weight. Like right now, the metabolic health field is dominated by the thought that, um, or obesity medicine, maybe more than metabolic health, dominated by the thought that being overweight is the problem. And all you need to do is lose weight. doesn't matter how you do it. Any diet is going to work because you lose weight on any diet. It's true. You lose weight on any diet, but it doesn't fix the problem that you have body fat that you can't burn. You have less of it. And now you've forced yourself to burn some of it. And gee whiz, this is maybe why we see that people who yo-yo diet have a harder and harder time losing weight every single time. Because mm. perhaps they've really damaged their body. They've subjected their cells to oxidative stress. Now they have fewer, um, fewer reserves that help them fight off oxidative stress, which will happen when they burn their body fat. Mm. So you have to, you know, they have a harder time burning their body fat. And some very strange things happen when you can't burn your body fat because it's full of um, oxidative stress inducing fat. A lot of people have told me that they don't want to move, that they mm. will do anything to avoid burning the body fat in their muscles because it makes them feel hot, like they're suffocating. Hmm. And that's what oxidative stress can do. That is energy being released as heat instead of ATP. Hmm. You see, so our cells, when they have to burn body fat that they don't want to burn, it's unstable body fat, they can't generate energy. Cellular energy is called ATP, but they can generate free radicals, which release heat. It's like an old car with an inefficient engine that doesn't get the same kind of gas mileage. It'll heat up. It'll run hotter. That's because of oxidative stress. It does the same thing to engines as it does to our mitochondria. Hmm. That's so interesting. I think, you know, when I, when I'm hearing you talk, I'm thinking about friends that I know who are struggling to lose weight and the multitude of layers that they're struggling with, not only from just like the energy perspective of having less energy to begin with as someone who's carrying extra body fat around, but also somebody who maybe is like just struggling to to move because they're, um, you know, as you're, as you're saying, like they, they just don't have that, that will, or, you know, their body is actually, um, heating up to the point where like, they're not will, willing or able to, you know, be able to actually go burn that, um, extra weight. So, you know, I think about the layers that it takes to actually really comprehend, like getting yourself to a place of true health. And there are all these like shortcuts being thrown out there for people, but what it would take somebody to really reestablish a firm foundation of health these days, it needs to be a slow process. It, 
It yes. can't be something that happens overnight. It needs to be small habits that slowly le- seep into everything that you do. Um, if you want it to be a bedrock of, you know, if you want to get to a point where you have this bedrock of good health and not just be yo-yo dieting for the next 20, 30 years. Right. So metabolic health comes down to being able to be energized. And and, and the name that we have for uh, well, your friends who are overweight, they have a metabolic, they have metabolic damage and they, they can probably, f- they feel it when they are, when you're saying that they feel like they don't want to move or they're fatigued. That is a sign of metabolic damage, difficulty losing weight and getting hungry. Um, the sign of metabolic damage, we need to give this metabolic damage a name and we actually have a name for it, but in order to cure it and understand it better, it, we need to give it a name. And the name is insulin resistance. Mm. And in chapter three, I talk about my energy model of insulin resistance. And I explain in that chapter why oxidative stress is the root cause of insulin resistance and why watching your vegetable oils is actually more important than eliminating your carbs down to zero levels. You can just use healthier forms of carbs, but you don't need to eliminate carbs. And in fact, you may not want to. So there's so much that um, is changes in our metabolism when you know vegetable oils have taken, hijacked our metabolism, basically. Um, they direct us, they make us hungry so often that they direct us, change our tastes. They, they make us crave sugar. Um, And this is what the chapter fat body, starving, fat body, starving brains talks about is that we're met when you have insulin resistance, you're metabolically addicted to sugar, Mm. metabolically addicted. Your cells need it because when they burn sugar, they can get more energy than when they burn fat and some complicated things happen. And then in the end, you end up with higher blood sugar levels and, and higher insulin levels. And eventually we call that type two diabetes. But the root cause is oxidative stress, and it doesn't come from carbohydrates or sugar primarily. It comes primarily from the fact that 30% of our calories are vegetable oils, and Mm. they promote oxidative stress. 